Hey John, I just got done setting up your dock and dual monitor stand and I wanted to record a short video to go over some of the connections on the dock, how to set it up, and a couple troubleshooting steps that you might be helpful to you in case you run into any issues once you get this home and are plugging everything up at home for the first time. So I'm going to be using my laptop to do this demonstration. It should be pretty similar with yours. If you run into any issues, feel free to reach out. All this equipment is for you, the mouse, pad, keyboard, the dual monitors, stand, power strip, the dock itself, which is a Dell W19TB dock, the power supply for the dock, two display port cables, USB cables, the power supply cord. I'm also going to include a 15-foot Ethernet cable. This would plug in over here on the back of the dock, right down there. So if you're close enough to your home router to plug it in, I would recommend plugging it in directly to your router. This is going to give you a little bit faster signal, um, you know, versus connecting over Wi-Fi. Obviously, you don't have to use it. I'm just throwing it in there in case it's uh, helpful to you. So when you go to plug this dock in for the first time, you see there's a lightning bolt symbol on this cord, and you want to plug it in to the corresponding USB-C Thunderbolt plug on the side of your laptop. Bear with me here, it's kind of hard to do this and hold the phone at the same time. So, plug it in, then open up your laptop, and everything should power up automatically, assuming your laptop is uh, configured that way. So one of the things you might notice is that it has the same image on all three screens. I'm going to go over how to configure this so that it looks correct for you. Let me just get myself logged in here. You might see a, a prompt on your screen that says the following Thunderbolt device chain has been plugged in. And I would say go ahead and hit always connect and then OK if you see that prompt. You might hear your computer make some noises. It's What it's doing right now is it's downloading all of the drivers for the new devices, the dock itself, the wireless keyboard and mouse, the monitors. So it may take a moment or so before the mouse actually works for the first time. In that case if you need to click on any icons on the screen you should still be able to use the touchpad or um, if your laptop is a touch screen obviously that would still continue to work. So once you get everything approved, so you can see I'm now able to use the regular keyboard. So to set this up correctly with the display properties, you want to right click on any blank area of the Windows desktop, select display settings, then you're going to see a window it may look like this. So what it's doing right now, this is a duplicate. So it's duplicating the laptop screen on the external screens. We want to change it from duplicate to extend. So to do that, I'm going to go down here find this duplicate, duplicate setting. And we'll just change it to extend. And then let's move things around a little bit. We want to keep changes. So again, this should only be something that you need to do the first time. Once you have it set up correctly, you shouldn't need to make these changes again. So I'm going to hit identify. And what that does is it shows a number for each screen. So like three, and then you can see two and one over there. So you kind of need to drag them into the correct positions here on this display in this window. Now this might be different at your home if you set up, for example, if you set up the laptop on the right hand side or if you set it up right in the middle. I'm going to set it up to match the way I have it on this desk here. Just be aware that you know you might need to do something a little bit different if your desk is configured differently. So again, I'm going to hit identify. That shows me it's three, two, one. So I want to drag those into position up here. So we're going to say three, two, one. We're going to hit apply. 
and you might see things rearrange a little bit. Let me back out here with the camera and show you what that just changed. So now, when I drag things off the right at the left edge of the right screen, they show up on the right edge of the middle screen and straight on down to the laptop screen. It's resizing them a little bit because my laptop has a 4K screen, but it should be pretty straightforward. So the other thing you may want to do once you get this home and set up at your at your home office is select which screen you want to be your main screen. So typically in this kind of setup, I would probably use number two to be my main screen. What that's going to change is the position of the desktop icons and where the main start menu is. So we'll say screen number two. Scroll down here to the bottom. I'm going to say make this my main screen. And again, you can see it kind of moves stuff around a little bit. And now all my desktop icons and start menu tools are on the left side of the left screen, which is pretty typical, you know, for a Windows desktop setup. We'll go in that settings again, and I'll just go over briefly some of the additional options that you have in there. So again, right click on any blank area of the Windows desktop, select display settings. And you can see I've got my one, two, three, which matches my laptop and the two screens on the dock. There's some scaling settings if you need to make the text larger or smaller. And this is monitor dependent. So for example, it's a 250% on my laptop screen. But when I select screen number two, which is physically this screen right here, you can see it's set to 100%. And I typically recommend just leave everything at whatever it says is the recommended. Um, obviously, if you want to make the fonts, if you want to make the display larger or smaller, you do have that capability in here. There's some options for rotating the display, landscape, um, portrait, probably not anything you need to change. Um, not for this configuration anyway. The last thing I'm going to show you down here at the bottom, if you right click on the Windows taskbar and go to taskbar settings, this gives you some additional options here. If you want to take a look at my settings, I this is typically the preferred default but you know obviously everybody you know you have the options to configure this to suit your preferences um, you know automatically hide taskbar uh, use small icons things like that some people like to set um, taskbar location on the bottom combine taskbar buttons when full one thing I do set on mine is show taskbar buttons on taskbar where window is open and combine buttons on other taskbars when taskbar is full. So what that does is, so for example, this settings screen, it shows it down here, but when I drag it over to here, you'll see now it shows it there. Just kind of a way to organize your windows a little bit, may or may not be helpful for you. Um, that's pretty much it. And you know, then when you're done, whenever you're done, just as you would normally come over here, start menu, power, shut your system down. Um, I hope this covers everything. As I said at the beginning, it may not come on immediately if your system needs to download any drivers. For example, the drivers for the keyboard, the mouse, the monitors, the docking station. Those all should download automatically. If you run into any trouble, um, give me a call or send me an email uh, or you can leave a comment in the video. <laughs> um, I hope this video has been helpful to you. So let me know how it goes. Thanks and stay safe, bud.